Howdy, April Precal. It's Miss Kush. I um, am back doing more FRQs. I wrote, I've now written three sets uh, myself. So, um, modeling off of what I have seen between AP Classroom and Mr. Passwater stuff and things that I've come up with and on my own. Um, I was asked to do a video on um, FRQ 2 that um, had a piecewise function. So, I did that. Um, and actually what I, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a link to this, um, the PDF in the description of the video. And, um, I'm going to encourage you, if you click on this video, this link right here in the PDF, hopefully that'll work for you. Um, you'll see it, what inspired me to write this particular problem. Um, so actually pause my video, go watch that and then come back and do the math because it's more exciting when you're inspired by, um, I thought this was super cool. So I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, but it is totally worth your time and effort and energy to watch that four and a half minute video um, about wolves in Yellowstone. Okay, so I'm getting myself organized. Let's talk through this problem. This is um, FRQ2 would allow a calculator. Here's um, our answer document. Hopefully it, it matches to some extent. Um, we do have a calculator for this one and I just cleared my memory so you would start fresh. And if I can find my pen, we will begin. Um, okay, so it tells us um, gray wolves once roamed freely from the Arctic tundra to Mexico, but loss of habitat um, destroyed their population. Okay, in the year 1900, now this part I actually made up. I, I wanted to, um, in the year 1900, where I had time equals zero, there, was, there were 500 wolves in Yellowstone, but by the year 1950, um, there were only two wolves. And actually, when I rewatched this video, I had, didn't watch it before I wrote the problem. Um, when they reintroduced wolves in 1995, there hadn't been wolves in Yellowstone for 70 years. So the first part of my problem is a little off, but it, the math will work and we're just gonna go with it. Um, okay, and so, um, but this is the true part. These are accurate numbers from what I found online. Um, it says in the year 1995, 41 wolves were reintroduced to the park. In the year 2024, the park reported 10 wolf packs with at least 24 individual wolves. So the number of wolves in Yellowstone can be modeled by the piecewise function given by W of T equals 500A to the T um, on the interval um, on the domain from 0 to 95, not including 95, and uh, 41 times B to the T minus 95, um, where T is greater than or equal to 95. Okay, so the first thing um, where T is years after 1900. The first thing they want us to do is to write two equations. So what we know to find A, we have to use this top equation, which will, which will involve data between 0 and 95. And so what data did they give us? They told us that in, um, in 1990, there were 500 wolves. No, no, notice when I plug in 0, um, what's going to happen here is that um, A to the 0 power becomes 1, and it's just 500. So that part of the equation does not help me solve anything. Um, so I need to use the second part. And that is um, what I would write. I don't know how much you can see. Um, what I would write is I would say W of 50 is equal to 500 A to the 50, which would be equal to what I said in this problem. This is the part I made up. Just go with it. There were two wolves. Okay, so there's that first equation. That's going to help us solve for A. The other equation is W of, okay, we need to solve for B. Well, notice here, I give you information about um, when T equals 95, so about the year 1995. But I also give you information about the year 2024, um, which is when T equals 124. Um, notice in this, if I plug in 95, I get 95 minus 95, which is um, 0. So then I get b to the 0 power, which is 1, which does not, it's not false. It just doesn't help us solve that equation. So this first part is not going to be beneficial to us, but the second part is. So what we're going to do is we're going to say w of 124 is equal to, nope, wrong equation, 41. I started to plug it back into the first part. That would be wrong. Um, uh, times b to the 124 minus 95, and this was equal to, they told us there were 124 wolves at that point. Okay, so part A it just said write two equations. We did that, and now let's solve them. Okay, so the first one, uh, because find the values of A and B, and there we go. Um, I, may, I might have been, I might have needed to write, uh, 
find the approximate value, do, do, find up a decimal approximation, I think is what I've been seeing. Sorry, <laughs> pretend that's in the directions. Okay, um, so the first one, I have 500a to the 50th power is equal to two. That tells me a to the 50 is equal to one over 250. Okay, I'm gonna take that and go to my calculator. Um, and what did I have? I had one over 250 um, gets raised to, well, oh, I wasn't finished. One over 50th power. So I'm taking the 50th root or, I, I have the option to do like the 50th root, 50 root, whatever, but I just find it a little more cumbersome. Um, well, let's see, Let, let's, anyway. They better be the same. Okay, well, I knew they were. Um, and so what we find here is that A is approximately equal to 0.895, um, this four makes it so four. So um, my colleague who's been grading AP, uh, B, AP calculus, BC, BC calculus for many, many years, it says to, it's a good habit to be in to get four decimal places. Um, okay. That's the first one. And then the second one, we had this 41 B to the, um, uh, with this, when I subtract, I end up, no. Yes, I had this equation. Okay, so what I should have done here is say, this is 41 times B to the 29th um, is equal to 124. Okay, whatever. I mean, that is an equation. This is just cleaner. Um, okay, so to the 29th power is equal to 124. When I divide, um, the one that I saw from somebody else's example, part A, like the piece was there, one of them was exponential and one of them was logarithmic. I just really liked this idea of the population decays and then the population inc um, grows. Um, and so I put them together like this. Anyway, it seems the first part sort of matches the real world. The second part definitely matches the real world, sort of. Well, anyway, okay. Um, so I need to take the, well, I have this 124 divided by 41. I'm going to take this value and raise it to the 1 over 29. And so I find that B, nope, oh, well, here, showing my work, um, the B would be approximately equal to 1.038, um, that's 9. And there we go. Okay, now continuing on, use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of wolves in years from um, T equals 0 to T equals 50. Well, okay, so average rate of change is going to be F of 50, minus f of zero over 50 minus zero. What was f of 50? Well, that was one of the things they, I made up the number that I said there were two wolves. Um, and then an f of this one, there were 500 wolves over 50. Okay, well, what is that? Negative 498 over 50. Let's see what that decimal is. Um, negative 498 over, I didn't need to type in the negative, but I did. Okay, so this is negative 9.96. Um, so basically, I would argue that the, the, the park was lost. Um, maybe we could say, oh, is the next one tell us, interpret, okay. Let's write that here. Um, Yellowstone lost 10 wolves a year. Um, I, I, we will understand better, I will understand better after we, um, a bit more grading as to whether or not AP would accept this answer, but that seems pretty reasonable to me in the context of the problem. Okay, consider the values, can you see this next prompt? Consider the values that result from using the average rate of change found in that to estimate the number of, okay, um, between zero and, um, and 95, Okay, so here's what they're trying to tell us. And I, I copied another um, prompt. Are these estimates less than or greater than the number of wolves predicted? Okay, so what they're saying, what we have here is we had this equation. The first part from zero to 95 was an exponential, what was it? Um, A gives us something smaller than one. So this is an exponential decay. Um, so our graph is decaying there. Um, and it looks something, well, here we could type it in if we wanted to. 
I don't know that I would do this on the actual exam, but I'm trying to show you what is happening. Our volume, I should not round this, but I'm going to because I'm just doing this for your benefit. Um, this was to the what power? This was to the T or the X power, okay. Um, so when I look at my graph, before I draw this, I, I know my window, I'm gonna have, um, I had a lot of years, so um, we got up to, oh, this was defined to, to 95, so let's go to 110, um, and then we had, we had 500 volts, so let's maybe make a max of 600. Okay, and sure enough, there's my graph. Um, so what we're looking at here is we're trying to say, well, the average rate of change, this is, this is um, an exponential highlight. This is a concave up situation. And so I think that if I tried to connect any point here or use the average rate of change, um, y'all, I'm still new at this stuff. I think, I think what's going to happen is that because it's concave up, the secant line is going to be above the actual value. So I think the estimates would be too high, um, but I probably... Well, comment below if you think I'm wrong, <laughs> and then I'll go <laughs> talk to my colleagues or look at um, a different problem that's similar to that. Um, so uh, that's the one area that I'm still working on, um, where they talk about if if we're within this between zero and um, 95, um, it is it's definitely concave up. What I think that means is I think that that means that the secant line is going to be that connects any two random points is going to be above the actual curve. So I think the estimate would be too high. Um, yeah, I'm not going to write that down because I'm I'm hesitant. But I'm I'm pretty. Comment below if I'm wrong, <laughs> but say it nicely. I get my feelings hurt, no, not too often, but but I can. Okay, um, so then it says, the model is valid from zero to 150 years. Explain how the range values of the function should be limited, but in the context of the problem. Okay, so what's happening with this one is um, the second equation had an average a growth factor here of, um, it was growing, it was one point, it was over. Let me show you where that equation go. This part is an exponential function, and since the b value was bigger than one, this is gonna grow. Well, at some point, you can't just, your graph starts shooting up to a positive infinity. The number of wolves will have some sort of limiting factor. They will start eating each other. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like something will happen. They, they will start encroaching on the human population and the humans take them out. Um, or they start starving, there's not enough food. There's three good ways for that population to be limited. Um, so at some point, this is no longer going to be an accurate um, representation. But we, yeah, so somehow we, we would say that we cannot, the, the number of wolves cannot go off to positive infinity. So something like that. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful. It wasn't, I didn't write down everything for this particular problem. Um, and we'll see what I decide to do next. Um, I definitely want to keep making some videos over the multiple choice, but come back and um, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how I can help you best study for this test. It's going to be um, fun to see how everybody does this year. Good luck. Keep practicing.